Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Scarlin here bringing you a new Neverwinter video and today we're going to be doing a guide on Mod 23 and the Dragon Hunts. So if we go ahead navigate over to your campaigns, Mod 23 is Dragon Slayer. It's been out for a couple weeks now so people still have questions that are a little confused especially on the hunt mechanics and the mods that you can put on it. So basically the dragon hunts are just another hunting mechanic. We've had numerous hunting mechanics over the past year. Some are practically the same, some are different. So we do have a weekly haul of 80, which is important. So you can see the campaign window here. Uh, and 80 is your weekly haul. And that 80 is the only currency in the campaign that has a maximum requirement on it for the week. Now, that's important because all of that directly correlates with the gear. So, that currency is going to be the Dragon Ridges, right? You can only get the Dragon Ridges from doing the Ancient Dragon Hunts. To get to the Ancient Dragon Hunts, you have to go through the Tutorial and the Enclave, which isn't that big of a deal. I believe you have to do uh, 15 uh, Dragons. So you do like five solo ones and then another 10 adult ones and then you unlock the ancient hunts. But the dragon ridges are the most important part and again it does have a weekly cap of 80. So every piece of gear practically needs X amount of ridges and if you're going for a lot of the pieces of gear then it does take several weeks. You're talking seven to eight weeks if you're doing it just on one character however what people discovered is is that since the campaign is fairly easy it's just you know grinding the hunts over and over again you can do this on multiple characters accumulate the hunts accumulate the ridges so for instance if I do it on two characters that would be 80 dragon ridges on each character in one week that's you know a hundred and sixty currency then I would be able to buy two pieces of gear, one on each character, and then transfer that gear to my main character. All this stuff is account bound, but then once you equip it to a character, it does become character bound, which does kind of suck. It should have remained account bound, but you know, it is what it is. So it is one time use gear. So once you buy it, again, I'll reiterate, it is account bound. So you can buy it on, you know, any character you want, transfer it to your main. And then it will become character bound once you equip it. So a lot of people have done that. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of the super sweaty tryhards actually got almost all of the pieces of gear in the first week because they farmed it nonstop on five or six different characters. I unfortunately don't have that kind of time anymore. So it's going to take me a while to accumulate all the gear that I specifically need. So let's go ahead and actually look at said currency. The currency can be found in your riches tab and it's under the hunt currency. Now, I know a lot of people were getting overwhelmed because there are so much different currencies and I know there was a lot of questions. So, first we'll just go over the normal stuff. So, the dragon scales you basically get from killing any dragon. These do have caps. I am capped on dragon scales. The dragon ridges, of course, is the one with the weekly cap. You can only get this by the ancient dragons. The dragon horns, the dragon claw, the webbing, the bones, and the plate are all the specific reagents that you need for certain pieces of gear. Now you're going to notice that it tells you what modifiers you have to use to get this specific currency. So the biggest one that people were going for is the hardened plates, for example. You need the hardened plates for the shirt and pants and also the new breastplate. So you can read this. At tier 1 and 2 of easily irritated rotating chaos, you have a chance to get a hardened plate. If you use a tier 3 mod, it's guaranteed drops. So what does that all mean? We'll go over that in the mod section. 
Now we have the five elemental strands. These are, again are reagents. However, these can be formed indefinitely. They do have a maximum cap of 10,000 each. But when you're out in the world farming, these just drop. Now, I do have an image I'll bring up on the screen here. I don't know the source of this. I'm not sure who made it. So shout out whoever made this list. But this is every zone in the game, every map in the game, and where you can form these specific uh, reagents, the specific elemental strand that you'll need for certain pieces of gear. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video here, if you want to write it down, take a screenshot or do whatever it is you want to do, this is every location for those specific strands. Keep in mind when you're out there farming these, uh, they do have an internal cooldown of 30 seconds. So if you kill a pack of mobs, you get a drop. You will have that internal cooldown of 30 seconds and then you will be able to get another drop chance now the chromatic is completely useless uh, in my opinion and when you're farming it does get frustrating when you're farming a specific uh, elemental strand and you get this the chromatic can literally drop everywhere and its only for focus is to donate to the guild coffer uh, you know strongholds haven't been updated in a very long time most people's coffers are extremely overfilled so this is just useless to me in my opinion um until they decide if they ever decide to update strongholds maybe these will have some kind of use but as of right now they're just a headache like when you're farming you know decayed elemental strands and you keep getting drops of the chromatic because they drop everywhere it does get a little frustrating So, yeah, that's that. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the useful items tab, you are going to get the drunk, the dragon hunts modifier. So let's go ahead and talk about these modifiers and essentially how to use them and, you know, what's going on, because most of the question revolves around these modifiers. So if we go ahead and view this now, you're just going to get this through the campaign. So every one of these starts at rank zero, as you can see on your screen, all of mine are rank zero, and then they go to rank one, and then they go to rank two, and then finally rank three is like the mythic level. So rank zero, rank one, rank two, and then finally rank three. Now you can max all these out, they all just cost currency, as well as again the elemental strands. Now here's the kicker. Everyone that does these doesn't necessarily have to have the maxed out modifiers. You just need one person in your group to have modifiers. So I play with people that have already maxed all of theirs out. So I didn't want to waste the elemental currency to level all of these up because someone else has already essentially done it for me. You only need one person to have the modifiers unlocked and then use them in the group so for instance if we go ahead and look at the cues we have the young dragon again which is your solo dragon now you can only use one modifier the adult dragon is a group of three and you can use two modifiers and then the Ancient Dragon is the one that most people are going to end up farming. Uh, and you can have a maximum of five people in your group with three modifiers. Now, the rumors around town, as far as leveling up, for instance, you do have to have certain amount of kills. If you look at the bottom down here where it says Dragon Hunter Rank and how many dragons I've hunted. The Dragon Hunter Rank is important because you do need certain kills to unlock certain pieces of gear for instance the chest plate you have to kill or at least have a dragon hunter rank of level 100 as you can see on your screen at the bottom there which i don't have i'm at 60 but to buy the chest plate you need a hundred kills or a, a dragon rank of 100 the boots are 75 some of the rings i believe were 50 um and the shirt and pants 
For instance, the shirt, I believe, was 50 and the pants are 75 So, the word around town is, is that you can get up to, I believe, rank 50 by doing adults. But then once you hit dragon rank 50, you have to do ancients for the next 50 kills. Which... You know, the ancient dragons aren't super hard, but they're annoying. And if you do put three tier three modifiers down, they get even more annoying. Uh, but they are kind of hard to a degree. Now, one of the things I don't agree with is we are scaled down in this. This is not unscaled content, which is ridiculous. But we are actually scaled down in this. So we are going to go into a solo queue of an adult or I'm sorry, an Ancient. That way I can show you guys how to put the modifiers down and how they work. Alright, so when you zone in, this is all instanced content. So you'll have two platforms. The left one just goes right into the Dragon Lair. And then the right one is where you put your modifiers down. So everyone will have to come over here. And this will show you what modifiers that you have available to you. Now everyone has this window. So if I put these three down and someone else puts three down. Uh, apparently it might take the highest ones or it's completely random. Whatever the case is. But you go ahead and select this. And then the modifiers will put in and then you'll have to hit ready and then they will come up and tell you what modifiers you are doing okay and then after the modifiers are selected you can see in the upper right hand corner here which modifiers have been selected and then finally you will just go into the instance here to the dragon um, it's a fairly easy process. So what, again, is the whole point of the modifiers? Well, for instance, like we mentioned before, uh, certain modifiers are guaranteed to drop certain currency. So depending on what pieces of gear you're going for, you are going to need to farm that currency. So again, most people need the hardened plates for the shirt and pants and the breastplate. So easily rotated and rotating chaos is a guaranteed drop. And, you know, if you're doing Ancient Dragons, um, I think it's 16. 16 per run. Again, the Finger Bones uh, is, you know, uh, Resilience or Tricky Reversal for a guaranteed drop. Uh, the Webbing is Limited Conditioning or Denied. The Dragon Claw does not have a guaranteed drop. It's any easy modifier or any medium modifier. So, if you look at your modifiers, that's why most people did Master Zill, uh, because these do all have modifiers to them. So, if you read these and go through these, for instance, Master Zill has a negative effect of dragon minions are more powerful, but it increases reward, increases chance at dragon parts, etc. So, if we look at Rotating Chaos, random player powers will be disabled for a time. This is... A pain in the butt because you basically get stunned non-stop uh, tricky reversal is at will powered uh, damages the player so basically every time you use an at will it does hit you back etc uh, and every modifier has its own stuff so again you just have to figure out what gear you're going for uh, you know if you need the tier 3 if you have the tier 3 or if your friend has the tier 3 etc and then you know just farm and farm and farm uh, so that's about it guys. Hopefully I did cover everything. Um, that is how to do the hunts. That is the modifiers. And essentially it is literally just farming, uh, until you accumulate all the gear that you need. Um, and that is all there is to it. Again, most people are playing on multiple characters because, you know, there is a lot of pieces of gear. I did a gear showcase, um, so if you want to see that video, just scroll back a little bit. I did a gear showcase of the gear for Mod 23. Uh, a lot of this gear is now going to become best in slot. So, 
you're going to need a lot of farming, a lot of time, and a lot of dedication to this, whether you do it on one character or you use multiple characters to buy, you know, pieces. So it is what it is, guys. Uh, it's not that exciting of a campaign, uh, but it is a grindy campaign. This is something, you know, to kill the time. It gives you something to do. You do have to kill 100 dragons, and remember, like, you know, there are certain stipulations. So if you do it on multiple characters, uh, you want to make sure you kill 100 dragons on one character. That guy can get the breastplate. And then at least 50 to 75 dragons on another character. And then that guy will be eligible for everything else. Then you'll have two characters that are eligible to buy everything in the store. You just got to get that daily currency, the weekly currency rather. Um, and that's it. That is. That's that's all the mod is, guys. So that is Dragon Slayer in a nutscale. That is the guide for the hunts and the modifiers. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave them below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Share it with your friends. Share it with your alliance. Share it with your guild. And I will see you guys real soon.